Our dear viewers and listeners, we greet you all in the precious and wonderful name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. This is the day the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to today's Bible study, and we are still in the wonderful book of Romans, looking at God's plan to get man out of his mess. The book of Romans does describe to us the power of God that was let loose into the ruin of men. And that power is the good news or the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his introduction in the book of Romans, the apostle Paul points out. And he says, I am not ashamed of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation. For us to be saved, for us to come out of our abyss of death and shame and guilt, it takes the power of God. And that power of God is in the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. And what is it all about? It brings to us the plan of God. It brings to us the good news that God has made a way through the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ to justify the ungodly. Let's get into the word of God. But before we get there, let's take this moment and dedicate this session to God in prayer. As you invite somebody to join us, let's pray. Precious Lord, we, we thank you. Yes, Lord. We yield our hearts, mm. our minds, mm. our spirits, mm. all that we are to your control. Yes, mm. Have your way. Yes, Lord. Do your will. Yes, Lord. Reveal Jesus to mm. us. Yes, Lord. Cause the word of God to come alive in us mm. as it is planted in us. Yes, Lord. That we shall bear fruit mm. in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Let's take our reading. From the book of Romans, chapter 5, we read from verse 1 to 5. The Bible says, Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also. We have access by faith into this grace in which we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulations. Knowing that tribulation produces perseverance and perseverance character and character hope. Now, hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit who was given to us. 
From that text, we see the five benefits that come to us as a result of our justification by faith through our Lord Jesus Christ. The first benefit is that we have peace with God. The second benefit is that we have access to the presence of God. The third one which we will look at today is the hope we have of the glory of God. The fourth benefit is what we'll look at the next time on is that we have the love of God. And the fifth benefit is that we have the spirit of God. Now, none of those is in the future. All of those we have now based on a faith in our Lord Jesus Christ. Those, that is what comes to us when we are justified by God. Now, now it is the ungodly that can be justified. And the Bible tells us very clear that there is none righteous. No, not one. What the norm. That is Romans chapter 3 and verse 10. And it goes on further to tell us <inaudible> that we have all fallen short. We have all come short of the glory of God. So everyone, irrespective of your background, you all come short. You are all ungodly. It doesn't matter what status you have. And being ungodly is the perfect place to start. Because God has made a way to justify the ungodly. So if you are ungodly, then you qualify. But as long as you remain self-righteous, then you don't stand a chance to receive the righteousness of God. Because we receive this righteousness through faith in Jesus Christ. And after we have received this righteousness, this is where the scripture opens up and says, therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. Now, what does that mean? That means several things. Number one, that previously, before your justification, you did not have peace with God. Now, the antinom for peace is war. So that means you were at war with God. You were in conflict with God. But now we see that through Jesus Christ is death through his life through his resurrection he satisfied he appeased he propitiated the justice requirements of God Romans 3.25 then he redeemed us and having redeemed us he reconciled us with the Father and we will look further deeper into the redemption and the reconciliation 
later in the chapter. Ina eyo mazo tujja kwetegerezo okugulibwa kwa feno kututabaganya. So you are no longer in conflict with God. Tegera te tucha ali mu lutalo ne katonda. God now sees you and I. Tikatonda kati ya tulaba gwe. Who have believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Abakiriza Yesu Kristo as family. Ndabo kitundu ku makagi. You are his children. Tulibana be. He is not angry with you. Talina busungu je tuli. You have peace with God. Secondly, the Bible says, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And that is where we ended last week. And what is he trying to say? I want you to see something that is happening. The use of the word we so he's not referring to a selected group of people. But he's talking about everyone that has believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Everyone that has placed their faith in Christ Jesus. So it is not like when we were in school. And you had multiple choice questions. Those used to be in section A. So there was A, B, C, D. So you had to choose either A or B or C or A and B or C and D. No, this takes everything. And where do we see that? The Bible tells us that having been justified by faith, we have peace with God. And then he said, through whom also we talking about those that are justified. So not a part of those that are justified. Not a fraction of those that were justified. All that were justified have peace with God. And all that were justified not only have peace with God, but they also have access by faith. So you not only don't have one and not have the other, you have everything. The qualification to receiving this package is faith in Jesus Christ. And then you are justified. You then have peace with God. And you have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. Now, when he talks about grace, he is actually talking about us accessing the very presence of God. And the right of Hebrews clearly brings this to the fore. In Hebrews chapter 4 and verse 16, he says, Therefore, let us draw near with confidence to the throne of grace that we may obtain grace and find mercy to help us in our time of need. I want you to note something here. This is a throne of grace. This is not a throne of merit. No, this is a throne where you receive what you don't deserve. It is not a throne of worthiness. It is not a throne where you go to be crowned based on what you have done. This is a throne of unmerited favor and grace. 
and it and so the right of Hebrews tells us, let us therefore draw near. So he's ushering everyone that has been justified to draw nigh and find mercy and find grace to help them in time of need. He doesn't say, come at this time. This is a 24-7. Every moment of the day, any moment of the night, you have access to the throne of grace. And it is here that Paul tells us that it in this grace, we stand. Why? Because the right of Hebrews, Father tells us that on the throne, we have an intercessor with the Father. And he says in 725 of the book of Hebrews, and he says, therefore, he is able to save to the utmost those that draw near to God through him. So when we draw near to God through Jesus Christ, we are able to be saved. Why? Because he forever lives to make intercession for us. And the right of Hebrews Father tells us in Hebrews chapter 10 verse 1 he says for the law since it was only a shadow of the good things to come and not the very form of things can never by the same sacrifices which they offer continually year by year make perfect those who draw near. You see, he says, even the law, <laughs> those who drew near could not be made perfect. So even us, any attempt to draw near to God without Christ is an act in futility. Therefore, he goes on to tell us in Hebrews 10, 19. It says, therefore, brethren, since we have confidence to enter the holy place by the blood of Jesus, we have that confidence to enter into the holy place by the blood of Jesus. Verse 20 says, by a new and living way which he inaugurated for us through the veil that is his flesh since we have a great priest over the house of God let us draw near with a sincere heart and full assurance of faith why? we now have a living way a way has been made for us it is a way way that is forever living. It grants to us access with the Father. And that way is the flesh of Jesus Christ. Which reaches out to us and takes us to the very presence of God. So you don't need direction. Jesus is the way. And through his death, Matthew tells us, chapter 27, verse 51, that the veil was torn from the top to the bottom. Now, this is very significant because for the Jew, it was inconceivable 
If you were not the high priest, for you to access the very presence of God. Now to the Gentile, who did not even have a covenant with God. There was no way you could even draw near. That's why the death of Jesus Christ carries so much meaning to us as Because believers. now we have access with the Father. And access means we now have fellowship with the Father. Drawn out of a relationship that came through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Remember he says in John that he came to his own and his own received him not. But as many as received him to them he gave the Power, the authority, the exousia, that is the Greek word, to become the children of God. So now as children, we have access to the presence of the Father. We not only come into relationship with him, but we have access day and night to have sweet fellowship with the Father. Not only that, we now have a privilege of dialoguing with the Father through prayer. That's why prayer cannot be a duty. Prayer now becomes a unique privilege where you and I that have been justified by faith have genuine dialogue with God. And it is unfortunate that so many people today who say they are born again don't have that fellowship. Do not have that dialogue. To them, prayer becomes a burden. Because this truth has not been unveiled to them. But now, through faith, we have been justified. And not only justified, but because we have been justified. Because we have this evidence. And what is the evidence? The evidence is that we have access into this grace in which we stand. That also speaks to our worship and praise. So you're not breaking any barriers. You are in the presence of God, glorifying and magnifying Him, exalting Him for who He is. Why? Because many years ago, an invisible hand did tear the veil from top to bottom as a symbol to all humanity. That we can now access the presence of God. He is there waiting for us. He is there ready for us. Ready to receive us. Ready to hear from us. Every moment, every day of our life. So now we understand that we not only have peace with God, but we also have access to his presence. This is an act of grace. So number three, the Bible tells us, and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. And not only that, but we also glory in tribulation. Knowing that tribulation 
nyinto kuyiganya kuno produces perseverance kwe kuzalo kugumikiriza perseverance character okumikiriza kuzale mbala character hope mbala neryo kezale su and he says now nagamba ka kado hope esubi does not disappoint teliwa what is he trying to say agamba i want us to go back and look at what the third blessing is to be to etegeze omuganyulo gwokusatu he says ayogera in verse 2 after talking about the faith into his grace in which we stand ngamba zo kuogera ku kukukiriza kuno kuyingira mu kisa kino chetuyimiriddemu adds a very important word i need to gamo chikuru nyo cha za not that the, all the words are not important chetugambe biri sibye bikuru but this deserves our attention nechi no cheta aga tusse konyesida it is the word and chetugambe chonti era so what he wants to say chategeza along with number 1 and number 2 ngokute kisoka necho kubiri which is peace with god and access ngachi jemirembe ne katoro no kusembezebwa okuyingira ekisa kino he says and agamba nera so in other words along with the other ones ngogase kubiri ebisose there is also this one nechino nacho chicho he says we rejoice era to strengthen umiriza some versions use the word exhort and i think amba to sanyukira dalala he said and we exhort in the glory of god twist to sanyukira dalo watu liba sanyufu mu kitibwa cha katonda so like i say this is not a and b this is both everything a b and c tategezanti olonda ko kino ne kiri ronda ko kimuna yagambe buli chonna basically what is saying chategeza everyone who is justified buli munte yagobwa ko musango has peace with god alne mirembele katonda everyone that is justified buli munte yagobwa ko musango has access yasembeze bwa they have been introduced byanjulwa everyone that has been justified buli omwe yagobwa ko musango has hope and should exalt in the hope of the glory of God so as christians or believers in jesus christ we should be a rejoicing people we Faith. all of us Wamu. should be a people characterized by rejoicing so why rejoice because we are rejoicing and that word rejoice or exalt is also the word we use for glory or boasting so what we are doing is rejoicing in god's glory and that is very important why are we rejoicing because this is tied to what god has done all along kubanga chono ochigata kubiri katonda byazakola so we are rejoicing twenyumiriza in hope mukusubira now hope esubi is the greek word ellipse muliona ne chigambo wachite ellipse now ellipse is an interesting one chigambo chili mubindi because when we talk about hope but what what comes to the mind of many people is if you are a football fan you are thinking i hope my team wins tomorrow next week that's, that's not what ellipse means it's, it's not i hope it will rain tomorrow or i hope it will be sunny tomorrow so, so that brings in a 50-50 no, when we talk about hope from this biblical perspective it means to have confident expectation of what is going to happen in the future the other word we could use is the word assurance have that assurance that this is going to happen now i want you to say a pattern here 
that comes all the way from verse 1. He says, therefore, having been justified, which is past, he then says, we have peace with God, which is present through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access into this grace in which we stand, present and Rejoice in hope. So, pointing to the future of the glory of God. So, past, present, and future is covered by this justification. So, it's not what happened. And it ends there. It adds to what you have now. And also points to what will happen in the future. Why? Because there is another scripture we will see later. When we talk about the glorification of the saints. The Apostle Paul brings it so clearly. In the book of Romans, chapter 8, verse 29 to 30, and says, Those he foreknew, he also predestined. And those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those whom he justified, he also glorified. So the glory comes after the justification. And there we have the golden chain of salvation. The chain that begins with God's foreknowledge goes to predestination, goes to our calling, steps into justification. And ends in glorification. And that's what happens to everyone that has been justified. This is what John talks about. In this wonderful scripture, 1 John 3, 2, he says, Beloved, now, we are the children of God. Now I need to take you back as many as received him. He gave the power to become the children of God. He says now we are the children of God. God does not have grandchildren. God does not have stepchildren. God has children. And we are the children of God. And in John 1, 3, 2, he adds, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, talking about Jesus Christ, we shall be like him, glorified. When he appears in glory, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Now the awesome, awesomeness of God's glory is beyond our comprehension. And that is a fact. But we have a promise. And it is against this promise that will rest our hope. So, what and when you read Romans 8.30, 
Bosoma balumi munana asatu. He is talking of all this in the past tense. Binovio nakata habyo gerange vya gwada. Fuanyo, when he comes to justify it and then he comes to glorify it. Tuwa gwa kwa musango, tuwa we wadechi tibwa. So what is he trying to tell us? Chichi ategeza. He is using the past tense to show us that this is certain. Akulanga anga binovia gwada anga kugaba chino. It is an already reality that this is locked in the eternal purposes of God. That this is a done deal. So where you stand right now, you have every reason to rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. And then he adds in verse 3 of Romans chapter 5. He says, and not only that. So it's like you are getting this and still holding on to this. I say, no. I am adding some more. You thought I ended at that. He said, no, don't end that. So he wants to explain to us why we should exhort in this home. He says, we will not only exhort in the home. The glory of God. He says, but we also glory. We also rejoice in tribulation. So you say, rejoice in what? He says, in tribulation. But before you, you log out on that, he says, knowing. Why is he saying knowing? Because there is something you have forgotten. Something he wants you to have an understanding of. Says, rejoice in tribulation. Remember the first rejoice we had. Rejoice in hope. Now he says, rejoice in tribulation. So why rejoice in tribulation? Now, tribulation to many is a word that is offensive. But let's go back to the Greek. So, tribulation is the word thripsis. Now, for you to understand what thripsis means, uh, it would mean to be under intense pressure. Under, to be under great stress. And this is on the account of the gospel or on the account of your faith in Jesus Christ. So this burden, this anguish, this tribulation, looking at it would be you getting a ball. Philipsis, try to put it in water. No good take or oh, and try to press it and submerge it in water. Now that applying of pressure is where we get this word thripsis. So when we come to the faith, the word does exert on us great pressure. Tremendous challenges. Immense stress. And this may be physical, this may be emotional, this may be relational. This may be professional, but the fact that it is a part of Christian living, there is one thing God does not guarantee. He does not guarantee that in this Christian life, if you are to live for him, you will not 
encounter stressful moments. No. Remember what he said. In John 16, 33. He says, the things I have spoken to you. That in me you may have peace. And he says, in the world, you will have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Be of cheer in the hope of what I have done. So the challenges and the stress and the tribulations of life will come. But they serve a purpose. To some of us, who have engaged in some sport. And if the coach is to help you to become better, and you are in a weightlifting session, or they are trying to improve on your core, to improve on your strength. So what they have to do is to make sure that they add pressure to your body. So if you're going to do some lifts, they keep adding some weight. The objective is not to bring you down. The objective is to ensure that they you come out stronger. I want you to look at two materials. One of them is charcoal. And the other, all carbon. And the other is diamond. Do you know that the basic material is the same? But how does diamond form? Because it has been put under intense pressure. And this causes the carbon to crystallize. And then you have a pile of great worth. So the pressures of life, we should look at them from an eternal perspective. God has a divine perspective as to why he allows tribulation to come. And here he tells us that we need to also glory in tribulation. So we not only rejoice in hope of the glory of God, but we also need to glory in tribulation. Knowing that Tribulation serves a purpose. And what is the purpose that tribulation produces? It produces perseverance. Some versions call it patience. So when tribulations come, to many people, it is an opportunity to run. To many people, they think, I need to check out of this. Find a cool place somewhere. Where until this storm comes down. No, 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 no. Here, he is telling you to drop the anchor and persevere in that storm. Because this perseverance is going to produce endurance. It is going to produce patience. It is going to produce perseverance. God wants to develop some steadfastness in you. And that only comes when you abide. In essence, God is working in your life to mature something in you. 
to get you to a point where you grow up. I am reminded of the book of Galatians where Paul writes to us and he says, let me tell you this, an heir as long as as a child does not differ from a slave but is placed under tutors until the time ordained by the father. The point is this. God desires that we grow up and sometimes it takes tribulation for you to grow up in a certain aspect of your life. So it may be that this has come out of a choice of somebody else. Or it may be an error on your part. But the fact is, Romans 8.28 says, says, and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and to those who are called according to his purpose. So everything is interwoven. It is working together. What does that mean to you and me? The message is clear that we should hang it in the face of trials. Hang in patiently. Do not have an emotional meltdown you will come out of this stronger you will come out of this with a better perspective you will come out of this better she says perseverance produces character I like some versions which say proven character. Now that Greek word of character, some is the word dokime. Now dokime is an interesting one. It simply means you being tested and you passing the test. You being tested and approved after the test. So the idea is for you to go through this fire and the real use come out. The intention of God is that you come out of this better. Why? Because it tells us in Romans 8.29 that those he foreknew he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. So the goal of divinity is that through it all you come out with the image of Jesus Christ. At the end of it all you will have come through this with the image of Christ. And Paul winds up and says and hope does not disappoint. Meaning that God is going to come through on the hope that you have in him. No wonder in a certain point, portion of scripture in the book of James Chapter 1, verse 2 to 4. He comes back and says, My brethren, count it all 
joy. When you fall into various trials, not one trial, various trials, he says, knowing this, I don't want you to lose sight of what the matter, the heart of the matter is. He says, I want you to know this, that the testing of your faith, so this is not about you. This is about your faith. As long as you have faith in Jesus Christ, this faith will be put on trial. This faith will be tested. And he says the testing of your faith produces patience, which is the same word as endurance, which is the same word as perseverance. And he says let patience have its perfect work so don't interrupt the process. Let patience have its perfect work. That you may be perfect and complete. Lacking nothing. That is the where God wants you to be. But it will sometimes take you through something to get to that point. So he wants you to know that the goal is to bring you to the realm of perfection. Now, that level is where you come to lacking nothing. And that's very important. So looking through the pages of scripture, there will be moments when tribulation comes your way. So what should be your response? What should be my response? Our response should not be any different from the one of David. In Psalm 42 and 43, when he was downcast, he says, why are you downcast? Oh my soul, put your hope in God. We stand in a better place. Better than Job. Who in Job 19.25, when he went through the trials, did declare, I know. That my redeemer is. What do you know? Is your redeemer alive? If he is alive, like I believe he is alive, you and I have hope. And we need to rejoice in this hope, in the glory of God. And why? Because through faith in Jesus Christ, we have given to us the opportunity, the privilege to place our hope in the one who knows tomorrow. Everything is in his hand. And we need to place our hope in him. So if you are there, you have never received Jesus in your life. You don't know him as the Savior. You don't know him as the Redeemer. Today, you have the opportunity to place your faith in Jesus Christ. Why don't you say these words after me? 
and say this prayer from your heart. I began by saying that it is the unrighteous that need the righteousness of God. So if you are in that place, God has made a way now we can turn the take away of justifying the unrighteous. Of justifying the ungodly. And that way is Jesus Christ. Alone. You go before him today. He will forgive you. He will justify you. Why don't you say this prayer? It's a God of heaven and earth. Creator of the universe. Here I stand. A sinner in need of your saving grace. Your word says that you have made a way through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And if I believe in my heart the Lord Jesus and confess that you raised him from the dead, I will be saved. So this day, Lord, I place my faith in the person and the finished work of Jesus Christ for my salvation. Fill me with your spirit and help me, Lord, to live for you, to fulfill your purpose for my life here on earth. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. In Jesus' name. If you made that prayer from the bottom of your heart, you have been wonderfully saved. Now you need to take the next step. There is a number on your screen. Please call. Tell us what God has done in your life. For you who is going through trials, don't throw in the towel. You were going through a process to be conformed to the image of Christ. So rather than being bitter, the plan of God is to make you better. And this hope, the Bible says, does not deserve. Speak to your soul. Say, oh my soul, why? Why? Why are you downcast? Put your trust in God. Place your hope in God. Let me pray for you. Father of grace and mercy in the name of Jesus Christ I'm praying for that someone out there undergoing trials undergoing immense stress who is under a lot of pressure that one at the verge of giving up Lord of grace you stay in your word that as thy day so shall thy strength be. You say in your word, Lord, that those that wait upon you shall renew their strength. Lord, as they wait upon you, I thank you that you are following your words to fulfill it in their lives, that their strength shall be renewed, that they shall mount up with wings like eagles, they shall walk, and they shall not faint. Lord, I thank you, and I bless you for what you are doing in their lives. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
It's been a pleasure having you today. Chibadde cha mukuendo nyo kuba nawe ero. Let's meet again next week. To demu nera weekend done from Dominion Church. Okuva mukanisa ya Dominion. We are saying shalom. Tugambe miyembe jibenda. God richly bless you. Mukama abawomukisa.